Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to another session of The Journey, A Meeting of the Minds. I'm your host, Kimberly Collins, the Educated Natural, CEO and founder of 10 Marketing LLC, located at www.10marketingllc.com. Welcome. We're so happy to have you tonight. Now, before I get into what we're going to be discussing tonight, I have to send a very, very special We Miss You to Miss Jennifer Foxworthy, my, my special, special guest co-host, actually she's my co-host, and I miss her dearly. So those of you that know the words of prayer, as you know, she's traveling back and forth to class tonight, so keep her in your prayers as she travels up and down the highway. But in the meantime, I have another special guest joining me this week, none other than Miss Sherelle T. Martin. Yes, but before she comes on screen, I have to give you guys a background view of her because she is the bomb.com when it comes to finances. So those of you out there that are entrepreneurs or you want to start your own business or you already have a business but you're having some financial difficulties, you do not want to miss this. If you know somebody out there that needs this information, Get them on the line. Let them know the journey of the, the meeting of the minds on right now, giving out financial advice. We're heading into a new year, everybody. The holidays are upon us, so you do not want to miss this because all of us, including myself, want to enter 2015 financially free and with some understanding. So here is Ms. Sherelle Tease Martin's background. She is the founder and CEO of Empower to Thrive, an award-winning business finance consulting practice. She supports small and medium-sized business owners with man managing the financial health of their businesses so they can reduce their stress and increase their cash flow. With her financially thriving business building blueprint, she works with her clients to organize, plan and control the financial aspects of their businesses using services such as accounting, bookkeeping, controlling, CFO services, and QuickBooks Consulting. This proprietary system was designed to help prevent business owners from making the everyday financial mistakes that ultimately cause businesses to fail. Now, without further ado, help me welcome Ms. Sherelle T. Martin. I'm going to turn this over to her because she has tons of information to give out to everyone. I'm going to be taking notes. So everyone, I encourage you to grab a pencil and a pen. You do not want to miss this information she's about to get out. Welcome, Sherelle. Hi. Can you see me? Yes, I can <laughs> see you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. I am so glad to be here. So I wanted to share with everyone, with all of your listeners, the financial basics that every entrepreneur should know. Yes. Because I believe that you need to thrive financially in your life and in your business. And they are kind of incongruent with one another, right? So yes. you can't be successful in one unless you're successful in the other. And so what I have come up with was, I came up with a presentation, but you know, due to technology, I can't show you my also beautiful slides. But... I wanted to share with you some financial basics, and so we're just going to dive right in. Is that okay? That's fine. Let's go for it. Okay, perfect. So one of the first things that I like to talk about is the foundation of what I call for everything that I do. I have four pillars of financial success, and they are the basis to everything, and they are financial record keeping, financial management, financial systems, and financial strategy. And I'm going to give you a little bit about each one before I dig into everything else because I believe that these thing, these four pillars are what sets the precedence for everything else that we're going to talk about. So the first one is financial record keeping. Okay. And that is the, the ins and outs, the cash, the recording of all of your transactions, right? You monitoring your transactions on a day-to-day -day in your business, making sure that you understand what's going on in your business. The financial management focuses on the how. How is it all being done? How are you managing it? It's about the budgeting. It's about the planning. It's about the forecasting. You know, how are you taking care of these things? How do you know where money is coming and going in and out the door? The financial systems is about the people and the processes in your business, right? Because you need to 
you need to have dedicated procedures, documented, documented procedures on how everything is going to process within your business. It also talks a little bit about the software solutions in your business as well so that you know, um, so you have, you know, things in place that are going to help you track those numbers. So you're not using pencil and pen. We're not using paper and Excel. I know we all love Excel, but yeah. Excel, is not, <laughs> Excel is not everything. So you need to have like a dedicated system that you're going to use. And then the financial strategy, which is my favorite part, it talks all about the analytics, the pricing, and you know how you're going to leverage your business, how you're going to scale your business, how you're going to grow your business. And so that's what the strategy piece is all about. And so I always like to take because this is financial basics, so we got to take it back, right? A little bit, but I'm not going to give you. This is not accounting one on one, so I'm not going to give you too much. That's going to make your head like do all these little twirly spins, just a little bit, um, mm -hmm. so that you kind of have, you know, so you can know everything that you need to know. So financial record keeping was the first pillar, and it, basically we're going to talk about accounting, right? So we all know what accounting is. It's the tracking of your numbers in your business. But the financial record keeping is you need to know that there's two types of accounting. So there's financial accounting, and then I don't know if you can see my hand, or if they and there's my managerial accounting. So financial accounting is all about the external users, right? It's about the, the IRS, the investors, the creditors. You're creating all this documentation for people outside of your company. Managerial accounting focuses on putting all of these documents together for the people in your company. So it's the board of directors, the presidents, the CEO, the managers, employees, um, even other department heads, depending on what you do in your company. Like if you're in the budget department and you need to create budget documents for a certain division, you're okay. creating managerial type of accounting reports. So those are for the people in the company. So those are the two basic types of accounting. And so within the basic types, and within accounting, you have four main financial statements. So we're going to talk about two of them. The first one is your balance sheet, which everybody, nobody ever wants to talk about the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. It's the balance sheet. And then the second one is your profit and loss or your income statement. You can use the terms interchangeably. So the balance sheet has three sections. It has your assets, which is your first section. And these are the things that you own. So it's the money in the bank, the cash, the buildings, if you own buildings, depending on what your business is, your furniture, fixtures, your desks, your computers, um, vehicles, equipment, those things of those nature. The second section is your liabilities. So these are your debt or the bills that you owe to your suppliers and so or loans that you're obligated to pay. So this is all the money that you have to pay out the door. Okay. And then the third section is your equity. And so you take your assets and then you subtract your liabilities and you come up with your equity. And this is your the value that you have in your business at that point in time. So I always like to use the example um, of a house or a car, right? So you buy your house for $400,000. That's your asset. The liability is the mortgage on that house. So you owe $300,000. So that's your, your liability. And the difference of $100,000 is your equity, which is the value that you have in your home at any given point in time, up until the point where you sell it. Then it gets a little, you know, it's a little different at that, at that point. But that's what, so that's your assets and your liabilities and your equity. The profit and loss is our next statement, has two sections. So the first section is your income. So this is the sales of your business. It is not the cash in your business. I'm going to say that again. It is the sales in your business. It is not the cash. This yeah. is the money that you have the right to receive or that you've earned from selling your service or your product or whatever you do. A lot of times business owners, especially small business owners, want to equate that to the cash. Cash is a byproduct of sales. The byproduct of the income. You, right. you know, without the sales or the income, you don't have you don't have any cash. Exactly. So you that's a that's a very Big distinction that I want to make, especially for small business owners, is that the sales is not always the cash. Cash is the byproduct. The second section is your expenses. So these are things you pay out the door: your supplies, your materials, your labor, um, you know, your rent, your utilities, office expense, travel, meals, and entertainment. Right? You get the point, right? So it's everything that you have to pay out of the door, that you have paid out of the door, are going to pay out of the door, or obligated to pay in your business. So I always like to say that assets equal what you own, liabilities equal what you owe, income equals your sales, and expenses are your purchases or things that you buy. So it's like a quick um, 
a little summary of all of that. And so that's accounting basics. So now we want to talk about um, financial organization. So you need to have a handle on all of your organization and all your finances in order for you to have control, right? right? And organization is the first step because without it, you'll be stressed out. You'll have no idea what's going on in your business. You won't be able to answer any financial questions. You'll keep having money. You know, you're like, I got sales. I'm selling things, but I still don't have any money in the bank. And you can't figure out why. You're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You're spinning your wheels, trying to figure out how you can catch up. Sometimes you'll try to do the bookkeeping yourself using Excel or or some other meth other method, and you just and you just won't be able to figure it out. Pop ups. Let me close my calendar. <laughs> um, and you just won't be able to figure out why, right? You'll just keep spinning your wheels, running out of time. And part of that is because you don't have a clear set of organization within your business. And one of those ways that you can get that is by getting a software solution. And you know there are I had there are there are quite a few of them out there. And, you know a lot of people have heard of and know about QuickBooks, but there's also Zero. There's also FreshBooks. Um, there's one called Wave Accounting, um, Bitch Mark or Bitch or Bitch Press or something like that. <laughs> something like that. But there's oh. tons and tons of software out. Peachtree is still out there somewhere. So there's tons and tons of software out there that you can look into and, and invest in to manage your finances to get things in order. You know, I always like to tell people you can't live off the receipts and off the bank statement out of the box because you really don't know what's going on in your business. You really don't have a clue because you don't have any clear cut financials that you could look at and try to use the data. And that's the whole point, to use the data to, to help you grow your business, to help you see what's going on in your business. Right. But you have to have a system. So I always tell people, you know, I've, I have found that since I've been in business that there is actually a lot of people out there who don't like QuickBooks as popular as it is. So I always say, you know, do your research, do your due diligence, dig into different, you know, come up with three or four different types, different softwares and research them and make sure, you know, find out what they do, what they don't do that is beneficial to your business or that you need it to do for your business and figure out the one that works for you. And if those four aren't it, find four new ones and start all over again. But you have to pick it based on what you need and not just what, you know, somebody else, you know, a competitor or a friend or somebody said that you really need to, you know, do your research and figure out which one works best for you. I mean, I am a fan of QuickBooks, but I recognize that, you know, one solution is not always the best solution for everybody. So you got to kind of do your due diligence on that one. So that's financial basics. Okay. We talked about financial organization. So now we're going to talk about... Um, how we're going to use that data to figure out what's going on in the business. So I like to call these the secrets that the financial statements tell you because there's secrets in them because you don't know them. So that's what makes them a secret, right? Sure. And so they tell, you, they tell you all kinds of things about your business um, that you don't know. So they tell you key, key, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Key metrics is the word I'm looking for. So they tell you all kinds of metrics about your business. So that for and this is for investors or bankers, you know, outside. These are for those outside people who are looking in your business. You're trying to borrow money, get funding for money, get loans for money, and they they look at your financial statements and they want to know, you know, is this person really going to pay me back? And so what they look into your financial statements for is they look at how is this business operating if they keep not having cash. So your financial statement pretty much tells them where your money is coming from and how you're funding your business. They look at it and they want to know, you know, if this business fails, are they really going to be able to pay me back? Because at the end of the day, they want to give you the money, but they want to make sure that they get their return, right? Exactly. So things like are they overextending themselves and their um on their liabilities, you know, do they have more liabilities than they have assets coming in? So they look at things like that. They also look at how your bills are due, how often you're paying your bills. Are you paying them in a timely manner or are you constantly late? You know, one your age your payables, aging payables, how far behind are you in paying your bills and how far behind you are you receiving money from customers? Because that also plays a factor. You can have, you know, six, seven figure receivables, but if the people aren't paying them, then what does that say? It goes back to the first one. Like how so how are you operating? How are you still making being able to pay your bills? Sure. And it also helps you to look at the data and find out where the money is leaking out of your business so that you can find the holes because 
so many times business owners tell me, you know, I, I, I don't need I don't need to cut costs or I don't know where my money is going. But they're not looking at the data. They're not looking at the numbers. And so you have to look at your financials on a consistent basis to find out where where the holes are. And you know, just quick tips on how to do it, you know, just scan your expenses on a regular basis. Always, you know, I prefer monthly, quarterly at a minimum. But you scan certain types of accounts and you look for things that are different, things that are anomalies, out of the ordinary. You know, why is an expense all of a sudden so much higher than it has been in the past few months? Could be something that's coded, could be something that slipped through the cracks. You just have to check it. You know, in the day now where everything is going in the cloud, we have all these subscriptions. Oh, everything has a subscription. And so you'll sign up for a subscription or you'll sign up for a free service and then forget about it that at the end of 30 days, they're going to start charging you. And so now you have these charges coming out your account. You don't even know about them because you're not looking at your numbers, right? right. Well, you forget to cancel a service because you meant to cancel it when you brought on a new service. So now you're paying for the same service from two different vendors every right. month because you forgot. You know, we get so busy caught up in the hustle and the bustle of business that you don't really pay attention. So I always say don't be so busy with the busyness of your business that you don't know what's going on in your business. Makes you sense. Have to sit down and take the time and look at the numbers. You know, I always like to tell small business owners, you know, key ones that the IRS IRS flags small business owners in case no one knew. They look at the small business owners before they look at the larger companies because they know mm -hmm. small business owners are always trying to get over. All so right. Watch your meals and entertainment expenses. Watch your travel expenses. Watch your office expenses. Watch your repairs and maintenance um, expenses because they look at these, your dues and subscriptions. These are the ones that they flag first. Okay. To see, you know, what are they trying to hide? Are they trying to hide something in there that doesn't really make sense? So I always tell people, watch those expenses, but look at your numbers on a regular basis. You have to look at your numbers on a regular basis. So we talked about the basics, we talked about the organization, we talked about the financial statements and the leaks. So how do we manage it all? Because we're always running around in circles, you know, doing 120 things all the time with no time to figure out anything. And I believe that the key to it is having systems. Because with systems you can actually leverage yourself. And you need systems around your time management, you know, sure. create a set schedule, especially small business owners, and especially if you start out while you're working full time, you have to have some type of schedule in place that you can follow consistently, you know, without pulling your hair out and running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Put the systems in place. Have use calendars, use checklists, create the procedures. Um, I think I mentioned that once before. If you create the processes and procedures within your business, you can have it whereas when you get to the point where you can bring people on board to help you, that person can take those procedures and go off and start doing the task without much of your guidance, without much of your help because you have it so clearly documented that they, they don't really need you to start the process. They may have some questions, but they won't have a whole bunch of questions. So you have to put you know, good systems in place. And then with the time management, I always say you have to stay organized, right? Because right. organized Organization is the number one key to yes. manage your time. You have to stay on task. As hard as it is, it is, you have to stay on task. I, I tell people all the time, my calendar has all kinds of reminders. There are a few of them on there, though, that when they pop up, I just hit OK, or I hit ignore. And then I never, and then later I'm like, why didn't I do that? Because I skipped it. So set the reminders, but stick to the reminders. Exactly. And stay on task. And you have to prioritize. You know, as hard as it is, because sometimes I know it feels like everything is a number one priority, but everything can't be a number one priority. So you have to set the priorities and you have to protect your time. I'm really, really big around protecting my time as far as separating work from business. Because as a small business owner, you know, people think that, I mean, you're just a small business, so you're, it's your business, so you're always available. Like, you don't have any other time, but you have to set boundaries for weekends, for family, yeah. you know, for church, whatever the case may be, activities, because it helps keep you sane. You, you need that downtime to kind of decompress and then come back with a clear head and a clear mind. So you have to safeguard your time and then streamline whatever processes you can. And that leads back to the, I'm creating the systems because I'm all about efficiencies. So you need to create the systems so that, 
working and done, but not always need you 100% of the time. You know, right. now hire whether it's hiring people, hiring you know software solutions, whatever the case may be, but implementing those systems. And a part of that is documenting your procedures and having them in some type of binder or I guess in the cloud on a drive so that people can follow them on a consistent basis. Because those tips, those five tips of staying, you know, in time management will help you with your financial flow. And your financial flow is what I call the process that you follow or the system that you follow to maintain and manage your books on a regular basis every single month, preferably every single month. But I get it. Sometimes you need to do it quarterly, but minimally, at, 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 uh, minimally on a quarter. But it helps you get all of that paperwork in order. So the first step, um, so I'm going to share what those nine steps for you are. So the first step is that you have to schedule it. Just like you schedule your appointments, you have to schedule the time that you're going to do the work. I have on my calendar that every first Saturday of the month I do my financials because I'm so busy doing everybody else's that I don't ever have time to do mine. So I schedule it on my calendar every Saturday, first Saturday of the month is the time that I go and I look at my books and get my numbers in order. And then you have to organize everything. Your bank statements, your payroll registers, your receipts, whether you use something like Dropbox or Box or any of these other Smart Vault, which is one of my favorites. You know, any of these cloud services, or if you're old school and you have a metal file cabinet, that works too. But have some type of system that you can follow to organize everything, and then sit down and actually key it in. And that's if you're doing it. If you're, what well, if this is for you, if you're doing it, or the person that you bring on board, they can follow this same process. But actually sit down and answer all of the transactions, reconcile all of the accounts, the bank accounts and the credit card accounts, make sure everything balances out perfectly, and then you get your financials. And at that point, you have to really sit down and look at them and look for the inconsistencies and look for things that look abnormal, out of place, out of whack, too high, too low, an expense may be missing. But the only way that you know that is if you actually print it out and look at the documentation. And then you, once you figure it out, you go back and you make the necessary adjustments to fix it. Don't just leave it. Fix the investments. And then for those who have budgets, which I believe we all should have budgets, exactly. you have to compare those numbers to what you projected on your budget because that's all a budget is. It's just a projection of what you expect to do over a certain period of time. And so if you have it for the year and you have it broken down by month, compare it month by month to what you projected so you can see how you're really doing. Like, am I really, I, you know, I said I was going to make $100,000. Well, if it's November and you've only made $20,000, somewhere along the line there's a disconnect. Right. So you need to compare it and make the adjustments if need be. Maybe you plan to, to make $100,000 and come June you get a big contract that actually pushes you up to another 100000 So make the necessary adjustments, not just in the revenue, but also in the cost. Because I find that that's a big mistake that people make when they're doing budgets or forecasts. They forget about the expenses. They're so focused on the income that they don't really pay attention to the expenses, even the little expenses like travel, gas, like those things add up so fast. And you're like, yes, they do. They do, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, why do I have all this money? Because gas is like $5 almost. So make sure you budget even the little costs, the, the ones that are so consistent and regular that you have, you know, budget those too. And then after all you're said and done, then you kind of sit back whether you have um, a CFO or a financial advisor or your tax profession, you know, look at your areas of risk specifically around taxes to make sure that you pay your taxes and that you're covered so that you don't get any surprises in April and have to write any large checks larger than you want or so you don't get any notices because you didn't pay it. Um, and like I said, make those adjustments also. And so that's your accounting basics. Those are your financial organization. Um, financial statements and how to find the leaks in your business and plug up those leaks and how to create efficiencies all within your business all using um, finances and that's what I had to share for you I really wish I could have showed you my slides they're so pretty wow that was I, a lot. no we still have a lot more to talk about <laughs> No, we're just getting started because I asked, you know, everyone on, you know, my social media sites if they had any questions about finances because I know a majority of the people that, you know, I'm connected to, they are, you know, entrepreneurs. Um, 
some of them have been in the business for quite some and some time, and several of them have just started, you know, within the last year, like myself. And so, someone asked me last year, you know, about finances. You know, how are we to get it all done? You have this huge idea. You start, you know, you may even go through uh, different companies such as LegalZoom, or you may go see an attorney and get your business set up as an LLC or corporation or what have you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you do that part, and then now you're like, okay, now it's time for me to get out there and start making, you know, money. And those of you that are, you know, blessed enough to have income flowing in from day one, you got this money coming in, and the very first thing a lot of people do is start spending. They start right. spending and they don't track it. Or they so, mix it. Yes. They mix and, it, which, which is one of my biggest pet peeves and one of the biggest things that causes people to have to close their businesses because they mix their personal money with their with their business money. And you know, some people are like, oh, it's all my money, or a lot of people are like, the IRS, like, like they're invincible, you know. Right. Oh, I'm not going to get in trouble or they're not going to come after me and I'm like telling people I have seen it with my own eyes it does happen and it can happen and it will happen if you keep doing it because that's who they target you know there's a group that targets the larger companies for you know big type those larger fraud cases but there is a whole division geared for small businesses because they know what you're trying to do they know how much you want to succeed but they also know that people are always trying to skate the line so I always tell people if you can if you are mixing your money, please stop right now. Yes. Just create a whole nother account. And it's a pain in the butt and I get it. I didn't understand it until I had my own business. When I worked in public account, it's like, why do they keep doing this? Why don't they just stop? Oh my gosh. But now that I'm a business owner, I see I, when I first started, I was like, Oh, I get it. Because it's a pain. You gotta write yeah. the check, you gotta go over there and deposit it, and you gotta wait for it to clear. Before you can use the money, I mean, that process is shortened now with technology and scan from your phone and all that type of stuff. But, you know, put yourself on payroll is what the gist of it is. If you put yourself on payroll, you can actually pay yourself and be able to pay all your personal bills out of your personal account like you're supposed to. Because if you keep mixing the money, then they're going to say, oh, either you, they're going to get you, they're going to get you with one, they're going to say you really don't have a business. And then they're going to hit you with, oh, you understated the amount of money you owe on taxes. So now you owe us all this money on taxes plus the penalties plus the interest. Wow. So in the end, it's I, I have seen a company that actually, and they weren't even at the federal, they didn't even get caught at the federal level. They got caught at a state level and they literally had to close their doors because they couldn't sustain because the tax liability was so high. So it's really not worth it. I promise you it's not worth it. Please, 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 please stop doing it. Well, that was one of the challenges that I faced, you know, when I first started, you know, when I had my LLC formed and everything, and I was like, okay. And my lawyer told me, she says, okay, Kim, we did all the official paperwork, you know, to get you formed and everything. Now you need to go and see an attorney or a tax professional, I mean, not attorney, but a tax professional, and, you know, make sure you get all your tax stuff situated. And also, I encourage you to start a business account. And I was like... Well, I was kind of torn because I had certain other entrepreneurs telling me, you don't need a business account. And then I had my attorney telling me to get a, you know, a business account. So, you know, sure, if you can really hone in on people, why do they need a business account? Why do you really need to separate business and personal? Because a lot of people really still to this day do not believe they need to do that. But I, I went out there, you know what, I'm going to talk to um, a financial person. They told me they said you absolutely have to have a business account because it, she, according to them, she was saying that it shows, the, like you said, the IRS that you're, first of all, you're serious in your business. Mm -hmm. So if you keep all of your business stuff separated from your personal, it's easy to track. It is. So, it is. And, and, it, and what a lot of people don't realize that is a business is considered an actual entity. It's considered a separate legal person, if you will. Right. You have you there's you because you have a social security number. A business has a federal ID number. Even if you're operating as a freelance and you're using your social security number, you absolutely should still have a separate business account to track your income and expenses to show, like you said, to show that you're serious about being in business, even as a freelancer. 
you're serious about being in business and that you're being fiscally responsible. You're not trying to skate the line. You're not trying to commit fraud. You know, it lets them know all of this and it's easier to track your income and expenses when they're separated from your personal because then it's not all mixed and messy. You're spending hours, hours and days trying to separate it for tax purposes because People that do that, they try to skate through things that they know they aren't supposed to deduct as expenses, right. and that's what it all boils down to. You know, they're trying to they're trying to hide stuff, but trying to be legal, but not legal all at the same time. <laughs> it's not even worth the headache. It's really not worth the headache. But you have to ha absolutely have to have a separate bank account to track your business and expenses, and it doesn't take much to set up a bank account. I mean. It's, yeah. Even as a freelancer, if you use your social security number, it can still be a separate account under your social security number, but just make it a separate bank account. That's all. All right. Now, should people, um, since we're talking about that, should people get separate um, checking and um, credit cards for their business, or should they just get, like, the debit card? Okay, so my personal opinion is that debit cards are the devil for business. <laughs> <laughs> for businesses. Because when you have a cre a debit card, in the, so first to answer your first question, yes, you should have a separate bank account, separate credit cards, separate debit. If you have separate bank accounts, you'll have separate debit cards. Keep everything separate. But what what happens with business owners is the debit card is what gets them in trouble with the mixing because if they don't have the money in this account, but they're like, oh well, I'll just use this account and then I'll put it back. But then they never put it back. And so that's how they get in trouble. And if you are going to honestly do it, then okay. But I don't recommend it by no means. Definitely keep the, the separate account. Because then with the debit card, they're all over the place swiping. And, you know, just like in your personal life, you come home, you'd be like, where did all the money go? Oh, I didn't mean to spend $200. I was supposed to spend $50. It happens right. the all the time, right? You spend more than what you plan. And the next thing you know, you have business expenses coming through the door and you can't, you can't pay them because you spent the money because you would just swipe crazy. Just So I don't personally like debit cards for businesses, but it, I can't do anything about that. I just recommend if you're going to use it, use it responsibly. Kind of like drink responsibly. Swipe right. responsibly. That's about to be my new campaign. <laughs> swipe responsibly. <laughs> so you do recommend a separate since you don't like debit cards. So I guess that means they have to go and get a business credit card. Yes, yes. And plus when you have a business credit card, they'll give you at the end of the year, you can get a report that shows you what all the expenses were by cat. Most of the cards do it now where you can get it already pre-categorized okay. to help you with your tax, especially if you're not using a system like a, a software system. It'll help you with you know what categories your expenses belong in because they'll actually do it for you based on I guess they do studies based on what other people you use the cars for and they tally it all up for you so you'll know this much was travel this much was meal this much was kinda like other or office expense so they'll do it for you but yes definitely definitely keep it separate okay great advice great advice because I know that was one of my earlier struggles I was like I could just get a debit card and you know I have a separate business account and everything. All I need is a debit card. I don't need a credit card. I have my personal credit card. So what was happening for me personally was I would use my credit, my personal credit card, and then when it came to paying for stuff, I would kind of pull it like if I had the money in my personal account, I'd put it. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Yeah, I, had, I would put for personal to pay for business, and I was like, this is just getting confusing. And it does. It gets very confusing. And I don't want people to think I'm like, go out there and get credit. Because, no, we're not saying, you know, credit. Yes, credit, credit, credit. No, 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 no. I don't want that to be the no. misunderstanding. But what I'm saying is that, I mean, if you have to get a debit card, just be responsible about it. But I just, I personally would rather business owners just write checks. Because, just because they get really careless about how they're spending their money because it's so easy and you know if they're out and their personal account doesn't have the money they're like oh well, I'll just use this account and then like you said it gets messy you know you, then you start figuring out well what card is it I don't know which card oh I didn't even read the card I just took it out of my wallet you know all kinds of I've heard it all I, <laughs> I believe I, I heard all kinds of stories um, I have one of my clients keeps telling me that 
he read some book, and I don't even know what the name of the book is. I have to find it. And that this book said that everything that he does is business. Everything. Because you are your business when you're first starting out. Every, I'm like, everything? He's like, everything. I'm like, uh, the trip, the family ski trip was not a business expense. No. You can't, you can't pass that off. Like, I, I have to find out the name of this book so I can see what other craziness is in it. But he's like, that's what the guy said. I'm like, everything you read is not true. Wow. <laughs> don't do it. I, don't do it. And it just, it's craziness. It's craziness. Wow, I I, whew, I can definitely attest to that because that's why I really wanted to do this segment because I had so many financial, you know, ups and downs from starting, you know, when I first started out. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs are coming on board here and a lot of them are going to be facing the same struggles, the same decisions, the same confusions that I went through. And so what I wanted, um, Sherelle, for us to, to talk about um, is how important is when it, well, let me put it like this. When it comes to financial management in your, you know, line of work and in your business, what is probably the number one thing you see a lot of entrepreneurs or business owners do? What is, what are they, what is that common mistake that they all do and you wish that you could just tell people, please stop? Other than the co-mingling? Other than the co-mingling. <laughs> because that <laughs> is probably, um, I would say the co-mingling is definitely probably number one just because it's because people do it yeah. um, I won't rehash it but I've said my piece on that but other the other thing is probably not you not creating budgets okay. so it's kind of like they're operating in the dark you just like click my heels three times and then I'll make a hundred thousand dollars uh no it's Ooh. not that simple <laughs> if it was that simple we would all be clicking yeah, our heels exactly you know you have to have a budget and you really need to have some type of marketing plan that you can kind of marry it to so that you can figure out how you're going to work that budget. I mean, you, it's not just about making the budget and then you got to figure out what you're going to do to get the money in the door. But not having a budget so people don't know how much money they're going to make at what times of the year, especially if it's a seasonal business, you know, where their costs are going to come in, where their costs are going to come from. They're just kind of like operating in that hustle mentality. And if you're gonna, if you want to set up a business and you want to run a business, then you have to act like you're a CEO of a business. And so you can, you got to get out of that hustle mentality. And so that's probably the third thing that I see is that you know everybody's so busy hustling and grinding, and they don't, but they're not really looking at, at it as a business. So they've really just created a job for themselves. Yeah. True. True. So budget, yeah. budget. Budget. Yes. And everyone, we have. That segment coming up later about budgeting. So we're not going to get too much into that tonight, but stay tuned. It's coming because, like she said, it's very important. I had to learn that lesson myself, especially last year when I first started. Um, yeah, your girl Kimberly Collins had to learn a serious budgeting uh, lesson. <laughs> but thank goodness, you know, I have a great support team here. And they said, hey, they see me about to make a mistake. And they set me down and explained some key financial things to me. You know, so it's just like just like we've already said about the whole commingling thing. I had to learn that because I was thinking I didn't think it made a big deal, but I learned that yes, it does. Yeah. It does make a big deal. Also, Sherelle, when it comes to finances, and I know you mentioned earlier about record keeping, is there like a program that you could um, that you just like really stick to that probably be really easy for a lot of people to use? Um, as far as keeping their numbers straight, that was one of the number one things someone mentioned to me earlier was how do I keep my numbers straight? I tried this program, it didn't work, or um, I, especially if they forgot to add something in there. Um, record keeping. What is something that people can use? I know you don't like um, Excel and things like that, but you know, is it best to just keep the keep it on file, the actual paper, or electronically uh, you know I'm for electronically and not just because you know we're all about going green but I mean let's face it you only have so much space to store so much paper right right and so I'm definitely about using technology um, and they are making it so much more easier um, that if you have no reason not to use technology so 
I'm a huge fan. I'm a fan of QuickBooks. I've used QuickBooks. I don't even know when I started using QuickBooks. That's how long I've used QuickBooks. Um, but I like QuickBooks because I think it's easy to use, but I have heard people say that it wasn't. But I think it's easy to use. It's user-friendly, and it's almost universal, if you will, because so many other accountants use it. So you're, you're bound to be able to find someone who can show you how to use it or train you on how to use it. Um, I also like FreshBooks, which is fairly new. But it's, in my opinion, it's more for freelancers. So... Um, because you can do quick invoicing, you can attach it to PayPal um, so that you can you know, electronically send your invoices and people can pay you through PayPal and not have to give you their information. So it kind of, And it also does um, time tracking, like project management or time tracking, so you're able to track your hours and bill it out that way. QuickBooks also does um, you know, automatic invoicing, so you don't have to remember. I, I actually had a conversation with someone and she was like, I keep forgetting to send the bill. I'm like, how do you forget to send a bill? Like, that's how you eat. <laughs> so you can set it up with automatic so you don't have to remember if it's, you know, if it's a set bill that goes out the door every single month, same time, same amount. But, I, you know, those are my two go-to favorites. When it comes to, I think they both have apps so you can scan receipts. Like, if you're out at a restaurant, you know, having a lunch, having a work lunch, and you're out, you can scan in the receipts right then and there so that you can throw the paper away or so that you don't forget or so that you don't lose it or so it doesn't get lost in your car, whatever excuses they want to, people come up with. But you can scan the receipts in, which is always a good thing, and you can attach it to, like, Dropbox. Um, I'm a fan of Dropbox. I like Dropbox, but I also like Smart Vault because it integrates with QuickBooks so seamlessly that mm -hmm. – it actually attaches the receipts to each individual transaction for me. So I absolutely love that software so that I don't have to go digging through a second system. But, you know, there's all kinds of, there's Dropbox, there's Box, all kinds of systems out there that you can use. So there's no reason, you know, with all this technology, there's no reason why someone shouldn't be able to at least keep the paperwork in a systemized order. You know, if you don't want to do your books, fine. And you want to wait instead of giving your person a box at the end of the year, you can actually give them a link to a folder. Makes life a lot easier on both sides of the house. So I definitely recommend some type of document management system. And, you know, I'm a fan of QuickBooks. I do run into people who do still use Excel. It's not – I always say Excel is better than nothing. I'll take that. So if they don't have a system – I'll take Excel, but I really work to try to get people on some type of system because for me it's all about you getting those financial statements that you can actually use, not just the tracking of them. I think people, when people use financial statements, they're only thinking about taxes. They're not thinking about business growth. True. And I think that's the distinction for me is why I don't like Excel because, I mean, yeah, we could track stuff in Excel to the moon comes up. Right. But you after, all, that's all you're doing. It's just it's just a huge database of numbers, of rows and columns, but you can't use it to actually grow your business, and that's why I like using accounting software systems. Great. Great point. Great point. Because I've been kind of looking at different, you know, software systems because I want to get things a little bit better. I like to see things, you mm -hmm. know. And like you said, Excel, you see just a bunch of numbers, and, of course, you go in and you add, you know, what this number goes to and if it was a hotel charge, if it was, you know, like you said, a business lunch, you can add all that stuff in, but I wanted something more. So I'm glad you brought up, you know, QuickBooks, because that's something I never, I've heard of it. I've used it years ago for, you know, our personal finance stuff. We used it. That but was I haven't used it in my business yet, so I'm glad you brought that up. That was Quicken that you use for your personal. Oh, yeah, Quicken. Yeah, you're right. They're not yeah. the same. That's a yeah. common mistake. Quicken, <laughs> yeah. Two totally different software. So. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely right. I was like, I know I thought it was a cute. Quick something. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Okay, now I have a question, and I um I, I faced this when I first started my business. Was should, what is that magical number if there is one that brand new business professionals, entrepreneurs may need to have on hand financially? Is there an amount that you can pretty much say, you know what, you may want to have this amount on hand before even starting? Before they start their business? Before they start their especially if they're going to, like, form a business. I know some people who just 
operate in a business type setting without having it formed or doing business transactions. Mm -hmm. But the business hasn't been formed. But for those of us who have a who are going that official route of mm -hmm. starting a business, is there a set amount of I guess capital they should probably have on hand because you know it's gonna be expensive in certain things, you know, to start to start off. You know, you gotta have something or you're gonna have a lot of debt and loans and different things like that. I can't say that I can't come I can't say like yes that number is X. Right. It really depends on the business, the business model, what industry they're in. Um, all of that kind of factors in. What I would say is if someone is seriously thinking about starting a business and they you know they're like, I really, really want to do this, then actually start doing the research. You can get the research to get estimates around, you know, trends. What's the what are the average costs that businesses in these in that industry, whatever industry they want to do, are spending to start up and to operate their business for multiple years. Like don't just do it for the first year. I would recommend, and that's where a business plan comes into play. You know, yeah. do it for multiple years, so you can see how it can grow. Um, but I can't just say, you know, yes, you only need a hundred thousand dollars or only need a thousand dollars because it really does depend on the business model and the type of business that they're in. Um, you know, a lot of people just start a business. I've, I've heard stories. Somebody started a business with just the money that they spent to register it with the state, and then they were off from there. But it, it, the ramp up was hard. You know, it was going to be hard because you had things that you don't think about. Because there's all things kind of cost you have to factor in, like marketing yeah. costs. You have to factor in people, and at what point or time frame in the business you're going to bring those people into play. If you sell a product, you have to factor in the materials and things to make that product, any manufacturing costs that go along with it. So there's all kinds of costs that are associated with if you need to get some type of certification. Because some industries you might, you know, you need to get a certification mm -hmm. before you can even practice whatever it is that you do, especially in the service space. So you gotta factor all that in. So I would say do the research to figure out what costs you need over at least three years. A minimum of three years, and then tally it up and see what you come up with, um, and then work towards getting it. You know, from there you can figure out. All right, so if I know I need five thousand dollars to start this business, how am I going to come up with this five thousand dollars? And you can start saving. I definitely recommend saving it as much as you can. A lot of times people want to use their retirement accounts and take out, you know, take out second mortgages on their homes. Um, it if save as much as you can for as long as you can. I agree. To not have to take those other routes, if possible, or to use those as sources of income later down the line for something, something maybe bigger, something major. Because what happens, I see a lot, is that people, they'll start a business, they'll take their retirement, and then they'll spend it, and it's all gone, and then they have to close their doors, and they're back to getting a job, and now they're starting with no new job, and no money for it. Like it's you have to really sit down and plan it out. Um, nobody ever wants to sit and do that part of it, but you have to sit down and plan it out and figure it out in advance, and then before you just jump out there and do it. I agree. I agree because last year I jumped on a just one major thing and. It was a major financial lesson learned. So she is absolutely right when it comes to any type of business decision. Do your research. Do your research first. Or like you said, you're gonna pay later. If you don't pay up front, you're gonna pay later. And that, and that's with anything, right? In life. Exactly. It's pay now or pay later. You choose. And there you go. Either way it's gonna hurt. <laughs> gonna hurt. Is either rip it off fast, rip the bandit off fast, or rip it off. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, one thing we forgot to cover: um, the money leaks. Let's talk about the money leaks. Okay. What do you want to know about the money leaks? How to find uh, them? Yes, how to find them. Like, where, 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 where have you seen people just you can find money? It almost seems like oh, or like. A common, so some common places where money is usually leaking is the biggest one is bank fees because people insist on paying stuff or writing checks when they know they don't have no money. Mm. I 
have seen astronomical amounts of bank fees. And I, I was talking to actually um, one of my board members and I were talking and she took on a client and she was like, this lady had 35,000, whoa, that's three zeros, dollars in bank fees. Oh my goodness. And they were constantly writing checks on money that they didn't have or money that they hadn't deposited it. They just was sitting on it. It's just unbelievable. Wow. I have so many times people are like, oh, I'll, and I, they're like, oh, if the money will come, I'll just pay it. It'll come from somewhere. But what if it don't come in time? It's like, mm -hmm. I always think like playing rush. It's like those people who go to these people drive me crazy. The people <laughs> go to the ATM and then they want to check their balance to see if they get the money, see if something cleared before they take out the money. And then when they didn't clear, they take out the money. Like, I don't understand it. I don't get it. <laughs> I, 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 every time I go to the ATM, I'm like, you don't need to know your balance. Just get the money. <laughs> if you got the money, you don't need to know your balance, right? Exactly. Bank fees is probably the absolute number one because people need to, they have to, you have to be responsible and stop paying things before they come, before the money is there to pay it. Yes. Um, that's number one. Meals and entertainment, I would probably say, are two because there's this fine line that a meal, that if you, if it's a business meeting, you can deduct it on your taxes. So what I want everybody to know that you, first of all, you don't get the whole deduction. You only get half of it in the first place. But so many people take that rule, and so they want to expense breakfast, lunch, dinner, the Starbucks in the afternoon, the 7-Eleven late run. Like, I, I had one client, unfortunately, they went out of business because they did not listen. But every single meal of the day went through that bank account. Every meal, every grocery run. I was like, you can't tell me that you eat. All day long, and none of it is personal. Like the, all of that is business related. All day, every day. Oh wow! Every day, even on the weekends. Oh no. So, oh. like meals and entertainment, definitely a second, the second one. Bank fees, meals and entertainment, the subscriptions I think are creeping up just because everything is subscription based now. You know. Right. Mm -hmm especially in the online world you got to subscribe to everything everybody it's like it's only twenty dollars the next thing you know you're spending like three hundred dollars in subscriptions on stuff that you may or may not need um, I want to say repairs is up there vehicle repairs because everybody feels like because that's the using their car for business so they right, want right. all of the pay like that line between person, using your personal stuff for business is so thin and so gray that you could <laughs> cross over on the wrong side very easily. So these are the places where I see money is always just leaking out the business because they're, people are doing frivolous. And the last one, obviously, is, is because they're spending personal, personal, spending their money on personal things. Right, right. And not realizing, because they're not looking at their numbers, they're not consciously aware of how much it all adds up to. Right. So they're like, oh, it was just, you know, it was just that. Well, that turned into $3,000. Did you know you spent $3,000? Really? Wow. So, again, it all boils down to people not looking at the numbers and not spending their time to look at stuff. Wow. This has been phenomenal because... I've learned something, and of course, I'm going to be talking to you about things offline, um, financial things offline, um, because I know you just you're just good at what you do, and I am so appreciative of that, Sherelle, because you're welcome. sometimes it's it's so hard to find people that know what they're talking about, you know, just telling it straightforward to business owners, because sometimes in business you need to hear it unadulterated, you need to hear it straight, you know, you need to have, you need you need that person that says, look. You shouldn't have spent this in this way. This is not a business expense. This was a personal expense. Because some people, like you said, kind of seem to, I don't know if they do it purposely or if they just just do it just because. But a lot of people make these mistakes on their business account just because they don't know. Mm -hmm. And like I told you last year, I learned a big lesson last year because I did not know. But I learned an expensive lesson because I did not know. <laughs> But now that I do know, and I'm surrounding myself with people that do know, 
hopefully in 2000, and from this point on and in 2015 and so forth and so on, I, as well as you all that's watching us, will no longer make these mistakes. So please, please take in, into consideration everything that Sharia has shared with us tonight because it's very important because I know a lot of you out there are still using personal money for business stuff. And like she said, it has to stop. I know it seems easy because it was easy for me in the beginning because I didn't want to start another account. I know a lot of business professionals out there have credit issues and of course you're like, you know, I have this business and I can't open up another account right now so I'm just going to use my personal card for that. That wasn't my issue by the way. But I know some of you out there do. I've seen you on social media talking about your credit scores and stuff. So with, <clears throat> excuse me, with that being said, please, please, please no longer mix the two. Because Uncle Sam, like I didn't even know this, that Uncle Sam actually looks at small business owners in that way. I had no idea. Yeah, they do. They look at them more than they look at the larger companies. Just And it's just because, because so many people are opening up businesses left and right that the volume is, is just going increasing. And so they're like, well, let's see what they're doing. Because people are always trying. Somebody always trying to get over, unfortunately. Yes. They make it bad for us, us honest people. I but, know. Yeah, stop it because if you think that you can't, that, you know, you it's, if you think, oh, it'll never happen to me, I promise you it can. It, yes. It's just a matter. It's not It's not about if it's going to happen. It's about when it's going to happen. Exactly. That's what it all boils down to. It, it, it really does. Because, and I have seen some stuff. And once they attach, they, they hold on, like, really tightly. So just... It's not worth it. No, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. I mean, some people like, are not afraid of the IRS. I am. Please don't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't come after me. I'm trying to do everything honest and upfront. Please don't come after me. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. Sherelle, closing thoughts. Last bit of words of advice. Last golden nuggets to throw out there to the audience. If you... So I would have to say, if you are not managing your money or if you're not looking at your numbers, you have to start now. And it, whether it's me or somebody else, doesn't even matter. Hire somebody to help you. Don't try to do what you don't know how to do. It's like, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to, just because, as much as I try to be a doctor, just because I'm trying to self-diagnose doesn't mean I won't go out here and get a knife and try to perform surgery on myself. Right. I mean, that might sound drastic and or extreme, but it's the same. It can have that same type of effect. So don't try to do what you don't know. Get the education and hire someone to help you with those things. Otherwise, I promise it'll be worth it in the end. It'll You'll be so thankful and so grateful. And plus, it'll free you up of time to do what it is, whatever you do that you love to do or enjoy, you know, so that you can do your work and not focus on the things that you don't like to do anyway. Because most people don't even like the numbers. And that's why they don't look at them because they're scared, mm -hmm. because they don't like them. But you can't hide from, like, numbers don't lie. So you can't hide from them. You have to face them head on, deal with it. And whatever you're doing now, um, put a stake in the ground right now and say, from this point forward, we're going to do things right. Right. So if someone does come knocking on your door, you can say, I know I messed up, but from this day forward, I'm starting right. And believe it or not, what a lot of people fail to realize is that if you communicate with the IRS and you show you know, that you are trying to do right, they will work with you. They really are not as bad as people make them out to be, but you have to... You have to show for, you know, you got to show some effort that you're really trying and that you're still not trying to do things the wrong way. But if you show effort, then you can, you, they will work with you. They are really not as bad as they seem. Now, if you're doing things all wrong, you're like, I don't care. Well, I mean, yeah. Well. Not a story for another day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much, for, Sherelle, for joining me tonight. I have learned a lot. I know my our audience has learned a lot. I know I'm going to get some questions after this. But everyone, I have a big surprise. If you like what you've heard tonight, is just the beginning. Sherelle is going to be coming back with another segment. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I want to make sure you tune in to the big surprise. But she's going to be coming back on December the 3rd for another financial segment. So please stay tuned. If you have yet, or have not rather, 
contacted her, went to her website. I'm going to let her go on and tell you what her website is so you can contact her because she is on it. So do not miss your financial segment personally one-on-one -on -one with her. So Sherelle, your website and contact information. Sure. My website is www.empower2thrive.com and that's the number two, not the word two. So empower2thrive.com and they can reach me um, at info at empower2thrive.com. You can catch me on Facebook or Twitter at empower2thrive. I love Twitter. So you can always catch me on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's how you can reach me on social media or you can email me directly. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to us. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Also, always remember, you can always hear the journey of Meeting of the Minds. If you don't catch us right here live, you can always catch us on WBND Radio at www.wbndradio.com every Thursday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Make sure that you're tuning in to WBND Radio. They are your number one inspiration station, so please go over there and show them some love and just tell them Kim sent you. They may send you something special. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us tonight. As always, until our next segment, we hope you enjoy your journey. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>